Free speech, you got to love it. Everybody gets to talk about things that are important. Some people are irresponsible and foolish. Other people do it seriously. But either way, and even hate speech has to be preserved as a form of speech because the moment you try to regulate it, then it's just a question of who gets to speak and who doesn't get to speak. And it won't stop because everybody will be trying to shut up their political adversaries and i think we're going to cover this from week to week as we go through september here not in depth but we're talking about relinquishing u.s control totally to i can i can's defending itself on its own web pages welcome back to steel on steel john luffler here with you and of course the worry is censorship could it ultimately result in that if all of these other countries get their hands in it some way or another as quote stakeholders end quote one of the lessons we have learned over the past week that became blatantly obvious is number one not only media bias which is now flamingly out in the open and there for all to see but that when it came to the issue of mrs clinton's health it was constantly being spiked by the media supporting her and there was a problem not that it's a long-term problem if it's just pneumonia i hope she gets better but in this case the one lesson to take away from this is that the media were not telling us the truth. Not that they were lying, they just weren't giving us all of the facts. No doubt. In fact, I had this conversation with my daughters last night. Number one, the media was lying to us about whether or not she was ill or not. But that's not the only medical lie that's recently been exposed. We were lied to about sugar versus fat. Now that happened in 1973, but it's only now coming out in the media that these three Harvard researchers we're paid money by the sugar industry to say fat was the problem, not sugar. And we changed the entire nature of how we eat and what we eat based on that. We've gotten fatter since with a low-fat diet, and sugar was the culprit. But they were paid not to discuss the problems of sugar. Yeah. And the third one was the Gardasil. The lead researcher, clinical trial expert on Gardasil, admitted in June that it was a lie, that girls under age 15 were not tested, that the risks of the vaccine perhaps are greater than the risks of the cervical cancer that might result, that there are other means and mechanisms, and she had to just, quote, come clean. Well, in all three of those health-related issues, we see that public policy was dictated by lies, including we had to fight Governor Perry here in Texas, which we did. He was going to mandate Gardasil, and I have two daughters, and we fought him tooth and nail, and praise God, we got to David Barton who got to him and said, back off, buddy, because you will lose your base. And we forced him to back off and not mandate that. I remember that fight. And, and my whole argument is what a person puts in their own body, isn't that their business? No doubt. Rather than, than forcing them to do this. Mandated by government. Now apply those three lessons to the idea of global warming. All public policy is dictated based on a falsehood right. in global warming. And all public policy and sugar consumption. I mean, the head researcher went on to be the head of the Agriculture Commission, the USDA, that determined what the food pyramid was, what school lunches would be. There are a bunch of fat people that ought to be suing the federal government because that guy took a bribe from the sugar industry to say fat was the problem. And so we adjusted school lunches and everything else. And all Michelle Obama's efforts have also been based on potential lies in terms of school lunches. This is a government intruding beyond its constitutional boundaries, and it's doing so based on lies that have been foisted on the American people. And the global warming is the big one because if you recall, you go back to the UNSAID conference, the United Nations Conference on Environment Development. Up until 1992, they'd been trying to find that one global crisis they could find that would unite everybody, let them impose global taxes, global regulation, and further of what they called global governance. And remember Al Gore's book, I call it Unbalanced Earth? Yeah. He buckshotted all this stuff. He just listed all the garbage, you know, so we would have a lot of angst. But he hadn't focused in on global warming. But right after the onset conference, global warming became the poster child. And all of the investment money went into doing global warming research. If your thing was to propose that maybe there wasn't a cause by mankind, you would not get funded. The only thing that got funded was someone who was going to show that it did and how. And that's because the politicos saw the outcome of that. You know, every time you kept asking, well, where's the smoking gun? Where's the really definitive studies that show us this? Oh, well, the majority of scientists believe that. Now, as soon as you hear that, the majority of so-and-so's believe, remember, the consensus is almost always wrong. Well, the majority believed that that was the cause of obesity, too. Couple that 
why hasn't global warming been crammed down the people's throat? Why don't they believe it? Because they have access to alternative sources of information, and that alternative source of information is about to be stripped away. That's the bottom line. For an extreme leftist that wants full government control, we solve the problem of co-opting all the scientific community by dollars and bribing them. Oh, but the public still doesn't believe it. Why? Because they're getting alternative sources of information from people that actually know something. Oh, we've got to cut that off. How do we cut that off? Oh, we've got to control the Internet. Right. And that's what the open society statement's all about. We have to co-opt the American people's ability to access other information so that we can accomplish our mission. They have not yet on global warming. I went down for my 50th class reunion in Southern California, and I talked to my family, and they're not bad people. Most of them are liberal. They're just clueless. And they're clueless because the media they're listening to doesn't tell them the truth. Your family likely not, but I was at 2015 CPAC, and I was on a panel, and a young student came up that was obviously bust in, and he was there to ask questions at the end. And so we started talking about global warming. That was his big thing. And they had prepared answers. Every time a response is put up by truth, then there's a prepared answer that's given to those people articulating that viewpoint, and they came back. And it just devolved, so we had to carry on a debate of, of maybe 25 minutes where I had to continue to shoot down falsehoods that had been foisted upon this young mind in order to protect the religion of global warming. And we finally did it, but he just got so vitriolically angry. They told me you'd say that. And so not only are the minds closed, but they're brainwashed. The anger is what I call the boom response. You can always tell when you've hit it because you get that boom response. And ironically, I've seen this happen in church groups or things when you're sitting at a table and you say something. They go into this frenzy for about three minutes. You can literally punch the stopwatch. And you might as well just be quiet for three minutes and take notes because they're going to contradict themselves half a dozen times. Now, once they run out of steam, then they tend to calm down. That's when you make your move. I've seen this over and over and over again. Always three minutes. Well, he actually was very well educated in his brainwashing in that he had a response to every response up until the last one. And so they had thought through, well, this is what the conservatives will say in response, and so we need to have a response to that. It was like a chess match. They'd gone six levels deep, and finally it broke, and that's when it broke into anger. And that's it. My analogy is you're having a gunfight. You go bang, he goes bang. You go bang, he goes bang. You go bang, his goes click. Click, click, he's out of ammo. The only thing now he can do is throw the gun at you. Which is what he does, yeah. The unfortunate problem is when you're trying to get to truth, realistic policy, you waste an incredible amount of time trying to, literally, I know the script. It's scripted. I can pre-write it ahead of time. And you just wait and you're sitting here, yawn. Would somebody get me a cup of coffee, please? This guy's running on. And then only then, after, like you said, it's 25 minutes has been my experience you cut through all the garbage and the nonsense and the chaff and you put it to bed, then you can have a serious conversation. Yeah, people just don't have the time to do it. They don't or you don't or whatever, and so they just continue in ignorance. So understand that a lot of times formally trained change agents do this. And the reason they do that, let me give you an example. You ask a question and what they are trained to do. If they don't want to answer the question, they begin to talk. And they will go on for three minutes, five minutes. And what happens is, is that the people listening lose track of whether or not the question's actually being answered. And in reality, he's using many words, the formerly trained change agent, masking the fact that he has not answered your question. That's technique. It literally puts people to sleep. And if you ever notice, that's exactly what President Obama does and some of the other people in his administration, as I recall. And the question doesn't get answered, but it chews up time so they don't have to answer that question and a lot of other embarrassing questions that are coming in their direction. You know, if you and I were to sit down, Kevin, you'd say, okay, blah, 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 what are the facts? Okay, I think we should do this. And we'd probably agree on it. The reason we can't agree on it is the constant spinning out there. And the average person, like I said, my family, they don't have time to wade through this stuff. You know, if Jorge Ramos says it on SIN, it's debe ser la verdad, right? Because he said it. It must be the truth. Yeah. Same thing with doctors. We believe everything the doctor tells us. We believe everything the study tells us, regardless of the source of the information. And it's so easy for us to look back and say, gosh, tobacco companies were funding some studies that said that tobacco was safe. Oh, how evil. Well, unless it's the left funding global warming studies with the purpose of taking control of, oh, the, well, that's for the public good. 
Kevin Freeman, founder and CEO of Freeman Global Holdings, a website you'd like listeners to know about. GlobalEconomicWarfare.com. Thank you, Kevin. I appreciate it. You know, Kevin mentioned uh, anthropogenic global warming, which is going to get us into our next guest here with a different slice on everything. But there was a Washington Post editorial.